I just want to get you updated on the U.S. dollar so far, and uh, I just want to give a little of my insight for what I project to happen later on the week or this month with the U.S. dollar. So uh, previous month, we see that how, uh, you know, the month has rejected this uh, port area, just say around 90.0, right? So um, that's when um, Jerome Powell and the feds started their talks on tapering for the economy. So when they started, when he came out with those comments, that's when we saw an increase, you know, the value of the dollar became the increase. So that's when investors got in, we started, we saw the bullish momentum for the month so far, and that's what happened. So now this month coming, we see how price has rejected a uh, resistance area around, just say around 93.100. That was due from like FOMC from Jerome Powell's comments based upon tapering. So a lot of investors was pretty much waiting to see what he says, his additional comments. But throughout the month, we have been noticing that, um, so from uh, the previous month, pretty much what they wanted to see was substantial numbers from the economy. They wanted to see labor markets doing well, they wanted to see pretty much um, consistency with great economic data. So we haven't been seeing the consistency in the labor markets. So that's been one of their holdups. So uh, so pretty much like all investors knew we that he was gonna leave interest rates the same. So now it was due to the asset purchase, right? So pretty much he maintained it, gave the dollar its uh, rejection. So previous month, when they started talking about tapering, you know, that was pretty much the rumor. Everybody was like, oh, tapering is now being discussed in the Federal Reserve. Now the fact is tapering has not happened. Interest rates are still near zero. Asset purchases is at 120 billion a month. It's been maintained, right? So his comments is pretty much what it's always been that he just wants to see substantial further progress. You know, he's been repeating the same story here and there. Like, it's the same shit. Just want to see further progress in the labor market. You know, so now, so now we held uh, the support area and we rejected the resistance. So now for the, uh, for the week, we can see that uh, later on on Friday, We're gonna have non-farm payroll, uh, non-farm, and uh, they're expecting the forecast to be better than previous, and they are expecting unemployment rates to be lower. So that's gonna give equity markets, a, you know, the good a good upside and probably possibly give the dollar strength as well. But beforehand, you know, the beginning of the week, I just wanna put y'all up to speed so far in the, in the US economy um, this weekend, they have been talking a lot about coronavirus. So we, we are seeing an increase of cases, confirmed cases in the United States. So I don't expect that to, like first, I don't expect it to like drop the market or you know anything like that, but it could give the market that fear in the beginning of the week. Like as we can look at equity markets so far, like we're still equity markets is still um, ranging at the highs, right? But yet we can still see that it's holding its support. You know, you look at the US 30, it has that it's holding its support. So what so far what I could see, what I want to expect, you know, for the week, beginning of the month, it could probably give equities its bearish, its bearish bit right to continue bullish so that's what i want to see if the you know if uh, they continue to talk about the cases they can start bringing fear into the market we can see equity markets make its bearish right we can start seeing safe haven pairs like uh, the us dollar the yen you know start trending up bullish more and then you, you know like continuously to the end of the week and then most likely when, if, if the data comes out good from, you know, non-farm and unemployment 
they're probably going to cancel out the fears. And then that's when we're going to start seeing equity markets start playing bullish. So that's just to show again, you know, the US dollar cases are rising. But I, I don't see it making a huge impact. I could just see it making, just bringing a little fear into the market, making a little segment shift. As long as, you know, deaths is not rising, you know, you're gonna, you don't get an increase of confirmed deaths, right? Because I believe this weekend, um, Biden already said that he's not gonna lock down the economy. So as long as deaths is not confirming, like what can fuck up the market though, is if, like they already said that people that are vaccinated are still getting COVID, right? But what could fuck it up is if people that are vaccinated, they're dying. So that could be a huge impact, you know, that could actually put us in full fear mode. Cause now the vaccines, what's the point of taking the vaccine? So as long as like people ain't dying, especially the vaccinated people ain't dying and they are not putting that on mass media, then I could just see this as a temporary fear that could happen for the beginning of the month or the beginning of the week. And like, um, we could probably see like, you know, the dollar come open up, probably uh, make a bottom wick and then go higher, retest this resistance area, possibly, you know, like break the high and then retest another support or stay around this range of 94, between 94 and 93.0 and then continue bearish because overall, the fact is that the interest rates are still near zero. The fact is the feds are still stimulating the economy, right? So that's still our fact. Like uh, it would have been different if, um, if we had a comment like uh, what um, Fed Bullard said, like he wants taper to start in the fall end by March. So he wants taper to start next year. He won, but just pay attention to once, you know, it's hope, you know, so we just know that they still discussion, they still discussing tapering, but nothing is a fact yet. But it had been different if Jerome Powell would have said something like this, well, you know, tapering is going to start in the fall, we're going to start by March, then we'd have probably saw more optimism on the dollar, we would have saw it break the, break the highs, we just saw that happen. And now we can look at the other markets like Euro USD, GBP, and then NZD. Like um, so far now, like we see that they're holding, uh, they've been rejecting the support areas. Especially when you see how it's rejecting the support areas, now we see how the dollar is rejecting the system. So for the month, you probably want to see it make its bottom wick. Like we look at uh, EU, we want to see it make its bottom wick. Probably in lower time frames, build the support. That probably can continue long again if we get a continuous if if we get a strong dollar right like we could see eu uh continue bearish but if we get weakness in the dollar then we're going to start seeing these pairs continue bullish we will see gu hold that support on the monthly we will see nu turn bullish So, so far, like, that's just how I want to see, that's how I play it. So this week, I just want to see, like, uh, the beginning of the week, like, how are they going to, are they going to, like, really come in with the, the fear, the inflate safe havens, like, G, you know, GJ, NZD, we're going to see the fix go higher. We're going to see equities turn bearish. But I don't want to see equities break its support. I just want to see it, like, play around the support area and then get waved off later on in the week. You know, like we look at the dollar, we see that it made its double top. So let's see how this plays out, right? Like, um, because right now I don't see no reason for dollar to continue its strength yet and break resistance areas because, you know, the, 
Like the fact is the feds is still stimulating the economy. So what I can see is like we hold the support, making them like a double top or just break below and probably retest the lows for better buy positions. And uh, we just got to pay attention to the economic data, right? Like, um, if we look at how unemployment rate is, so, so far, last month, it was at 59. So you look at before a pandemic happened, for between four and three percent was before how like you see how it ranges between three and four percent so this is probably what they want to see actual unemployment unemployment rate numbers percentage to be like so so far like we're no we're nowhere there yet but once we start getting below 50 percent that's when we can start all right like now this is what they want to see this is what the fed's been talking about they want to see consistent growth right so probably wait if we get unemployment below 50%, we get unemployment around 4%. And then that's probably, so that's what Beller is expecting to happen later on in the year, heading towards next year. So he's expecting every month after this to see good numbers in the labor market. So as long as we don't get COVID into the scene, like the only way like COVID could mess up, you know, uh, jobs is if deaths come in and then they start locking down the economy. Well, Biden already said he's not going to lock down the economy, but the Democrats tell you one thing, they do the fuck another. That's just how it is, you know. But uh, you can see that we got an increase in confirmed cases so far, but I don't think that's going to be the problem. Like, you know, cases is going to rise, people are going to be sick for a week or two, and then they're just going to go back to work. And I'm also want to um, start, you know, um, if they still continue, because they still in the United States is doing um, the unemployment stimulus. So with people is in unemployment, they get, you know, their percentages from their job. But what the, the, the government did is gave them an additional $300, I believe. So they get the 300 plus what they were supposed to get from the, you know, their job unemployment. So if that additional stimulus is still there, that they also blame that for being one of the reasons why people ain't going back to work. So I'm just looking forward to when they're going to stop the stimulus, when, when they stop that for unemployment. So if people are just only making $100 a week, they're just going to go back to work. So. <clears throat> so we see how uh we'll see if the dollar could close above you know stay above 92 flat if you make this a uh, little bottom wick and then continue bullish that would be nice to see and then probably uh you know play if if the covid fears come into play you know uh they start making that a huge topic we can start seeing, you know, safe havens gain a little bit of strength towards the end of the week. They can probably give dollar as top, you know, this top wick for the daily, for the weekly. We get this little top wick and then continue bearish to play if they continue to play that that sentiment, you know, uh, overall macro fundamentals, you know, the the economy is still being stimulated, it still needs the Fed's help. So that's just that's just all that they're showing us so far. And you know, you can look at how that last week closed, you know, like one, two, three, four, five. You have five weeks, this one week closed almost majority of what five weeks has done, you know. So that that also gives us a hint, you know, on what they expect, right? And then also we still fail to close above these highs. You know, could, you know, that's why I'm still expecting dollar to be bearish. But with uh, the end of the week coming with if non-farm, 
by non-farm end up with good data and uh, unemployment end up low, we could start, we could probably see an increase in the dollar. You know, like just play it, let's just play it, you know, day by day and see what the feds are doing, you know? And uh, also I just want to show y'all like uh, what happened on Friday, right? Um, So we saw this move at nine, like at 10 o'clock. You know, that was due for, uh, for Bullard. He said this around uh, nine, this came out actually around 9.48, but he said it around like, I think around nine o'clock, that's when the, it came in on the Capital Hungry News feed. Yeah, so the Capital Hungry News feed, you see it came out around 9.13. That's when he, uh, he started uh, talking. So uh, that's what happened, like, you know, with just, uh, with just that, from what he wants, right? You saw how it uh, pushed the dollar bullish. But we know the fact is already that, you know, even though they're talking about it, what already happened is that they still stimulate the economy, but it could still give the dollar its optimism and make investors want to get into the dollar, make it stronger for a temporary. But that just shows like um, when they make these discussions, what happens, like what, like how it gives it its optimism when these central bank members give these uh, quotes and, or, you know, so that's why the fundamentals be important to pay attention to the news headlines. And then we see the reaction, what happened, uh, you know, GU turned bullish, and when that happened, EU or pairs turned, you know, turned bearish at that time. 